Mr. McFarland, uh, how does one keep the creative spark alive after 350 issues of Spawn? I don't know. I, 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 I it's, it's sort of a, I understand the question. I think it's a bit of an odd one. I've been uh, with Spawn now for over 30 years. I know that seems like a long time. I've been with my wife for 45 years, and I think I still got another 40 with her. All right. So I don't know. When you enjoy doing what it is you're doing, it's not work. It's just it'd be, it, it's easy. So I and and I've said before, Chris. I need it in my life because I deal with so much other stuff and uh, especially on the toy side where I deal with corporations and getting people's approvals and getting people to sign off. I need my little creative paradise that is all mine that I can just wake up, come up with whatever's in my head and do it and not need anybody's approval. So it's my chicken noodle for the, for the, for my soul. So I, I, I know people go, Todd, how do you do it for so long? I, 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 I think I'd be half crazy if I didn't have it, in all honesty, Chris. Mm -hmm. Now, I also know that like one problem with like comic books is that, you know, a lot of storylines tend to get convoluted after so many issues. Right. But I've, I've heard that Spawn 350 is going to be a really great place for new readers to sort of come in, like even people who aren't familiar with Spawn. So in what ways is Spawn 350 designed as an ideal starting point for new readers? Um. Well, well, yeah. I, and and. It's always interesting to sort of go, when can you pick up either lapsed readers and or new readers? I, I, I agree. I, I think this is a spot, just like I think 300 was a spot. Um, we did the sort of two issues before issue 300 to sort of say, if you missed the first 299 issues, here, you can catch up. You don't, here's why I think 350 is a good jumping on point for, for two reasons. One, it it finalizes a story that in the back of my mind has been sort of lamenting for, and this may be shocking, 250 issues, right? So in issue 100 of Spawn, Spawn took his creator, his maker, and he cut his head off and said, no, I'm going to be my own man. And then he went on and went back to Earth and did his, his thing, which he's been doing for 250 issues. The problem with that, is that that throne that his creator was sitting in has been empty. And so there's been a, a power void, a vacuum in hell. And now, there, and there's been smaller scrums, and I've alluded to it, but now there's a climax of who's going to be hell's next king? Who's going to sit on the throne? Um, and there's a couple of the villains that are making a massive effort towards it. One of them being the new and improved clown who's no longer a short little fat guy. He's like big, like Kingpin and is, is formidable. And Cogliostro who's been around forever, who is basically now this sort of Magneto type villain. They both are trying to get there for two reasons. One, they both want the, to be the king. And two, whoever sits on the throne, their powers get augmented. So it even that like how, however good they are now, they're going to get better. And for both of them, that means they can take down their enemies everywhere, whether it's heaven, hell, in the universe, anywhere. That's it. It's game over uh, if they go there. And now the climax is how do you solve this problem? And and one of the potential options is that Spawn himself doesn't want to may have to sit on it himself um mm. be basically to use sort of bad vernacular he needs to dick block him right so it's like i don't want to be there but i'm the only one that can prevent them and the only way to prevent them is to get to the throne before them so there's this race going on right now between sort of those three factions right uh, and so 350 will climax and the answer to that question, who sits upon the throne? Um, but more importantly, moving forward, which is why it's actually a good moving on point, the ramifications of that answer is going to impact the spawn mythology moving forward. So once you jump into 351, the universe is now changed because of that. And it's going to there's going to be a bit of a jump like a few months in in the future so 
Uh, and given that every all my books are going to be impacted by it, that you can go, oh, I can start at 351 and I'm coming in at this new moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have to I don't have to know prior to that anything. I can just jump on at the new moment at 351 as we sort of start making plans for 400. Now, tell me a little bit about the decision to bring Brett Booth on board, who I love his art, by the way. And and I know that there's like an idea that you guys want to return to the classic 90s vibe with Spawn. Yeah. So so, Chris, the 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 bigger piece of that question is how do you keep your creative people on board mm -hmm. for for hopefully years. I mean, that's that, and it's a, it's a, and it's getting harder and harder to do that, as you know. Um, you know, when when sort of my generation and prior to that came in, you know, there was only one option: you become a monthly artist and you stay on books and you do it for a while, right? That's that's not sort of the norm now. Uh, so to try and get people to do that, I'm constantly talking to my creative people, just saying, hey are there any creative itches that you want to do? Are you getting a little bit bored? You've been on the book now here for 20, 30 issues. Are you okay with that? You want to do 50 issues or do you want to try and scratch another creative itch? I, and because if I've got creative people who are engaged and having fun, I think I'll keep them longer. Right. Just like employees, same. It's, I don't care my employees, my accountants, same thing. You you try to make it so that you're you're not sort of boring them. Uh, and so it came out of that. Uh, Carlo Barbary had been on Spawn since about three ten ish. So he'd been he put in his forty issues of Spawn and uh, was doing a lot of sort of group stuff. And uh, Brett had done his you know twenty five issues uh, of Gunslinger. And and so I asked both of them, hey, are you, how, how are you guys holding up? Uh, and and after conversations with them, I made the decision, why don't we just swap books? So now you can each try something different. You know, Brett will now be working with a different writer. Uh, and Carlo, who I had done a few issues with, will get back working with me. And he draws a hell of a, I mean, if, if I didn't have Brett Booth doing Gunslinger, I'd, I'd have Carlo because he's shown me that he draws the second best Gunslinger. So um, that it's more that just, mm -hmm. hey, and and for the reader sometimes too to go, hey, let's just shake it up a little bit and see if, if it matters one, one way or the other. They've never seen Brett Booth do Spawn on any regular basis. They've never seen Carlo do Gunslinger on a regular basis. We'll see whether they like that or not. Now, I haven't seen it, but I did hear a little bit about Spawn getting a brand new suit in 350. Can you tease that a little and talk about the inspiration behind it? The, it's, um, again, I, I hesitate to say new costume because I've done sort of iterations throughout the 350 issues. Um, so it, it's recognizably Spawn. Um, it's just that the part of what's happening is that as Spawn gets closer to the throne, it, like it starts to eat away at his powers. And, and as part of being Spawn, his powers are that his cape moves and his chains move and everything else. So again, the symbiote that it's on him is alive too. So if all of that gets diminished and gets weakened, then what happens to the costume if it's atrophying to use a sort of a simple word um what, what does that mean and what does that look like and that'd be part of what's happening moving forward in 351 um there's going to be like i said repercussions of what happens uh on the impact of the climax of 350 moving forward so you're going to see you're going to see sort of power structures shift that the people you thought were weak are now going to become sort of stronger and the people you thought were strong may become a little bit weaker so that some of the characters that maybe were taking second fiddle in the spawn universe are now going to become sort of big shots 
because of um, what's happening with the fallout of uh, the storyline of 350. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I can't, I, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait for it, man. Um, I will, I do want to say now that it's 2024, Jason Blum told us he predicted a year from now, we'll be getting a new Spawn movie. So has there been any recent news or movement on that? Yeah. I, I mean, look at 2024, forget Hollywood. 2024 is, is going to be my make or break anyways, right? Either I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give Hollywood the best chance I can to do it. And if not, I've got plenty of outside investors waiting, right? So I'm trying to sort of see if we can make, you know, the right deal within the norms of sort of the Hollywood structure. Uh, if not, there have been plenty of examples, actually a couple of big ones last year, where people sort of went outside the normal channel and succeeded, right? Uh, that just says, fine, you make your, and, and people have done this before with independent movies, you make your movie and you just find a a, a distributor, right? Mm -hmm. That like that one I can do in a heartbeat. So, you know, fingers crossed. You know, I'm I'm going to give as much of an effort to those that have sort of lived within the confines of it. And obviously, Jason Blum is you know one of the better ones at getting things done. They 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 tell me I get to read the script this month, so. Uh, the email is going out this week to remind them that they promised me that. So, um, and so that's, I mean, something's got to happen. Something's going to, something's going to happen. I just, I just know myself, something's going to happen because if I can't figure it out inside, I'll figure it out outside. I just, I just know myself. So, um, but hopefully we can, we can figure out a deal that it keeps all the parties that have been involved over the years involved. Awesome. Well, I mean, it's been too long, so I'm excited, man. I I, yeah, I, yeah, I feel it too. Like, I feel it in the air. 2024 is the year. We're going to do it. Well, the, well, the other thing, Chris, which is interesting, and again, we can, we can sort of get off on a on a side subject. There's been lots written about some of the latest um, superhero movies not producing as well in terms of gross at the theaters. I, I think there's a lot of reasons for that, right? There's no one one reason. But from my observation, uh, and I'd be curious to hear yours, one of the things is I, it, it appears to me that the world audience is sort of acting like the comic book audience in that, I get it, we can all sell issue number ones. We can all sell issue number ones, especially if they're wedged between big events or tied to big events or have characters from A-list books. So let's take uh, Captain Marvel as an example put her between two Avenger movies, put a bunch of the Avengers in the middle of it. Okay. I can sell that comic book too. Give me an issue. Number one, a Captain Marvel right in the middle of some big epic event that's going on. And I'm going to put all the most popular characters in the middle of it. I'll sell the heck out of issue. Number one, the question is, can I sell issue number two with none of that? Mm -hmm. And issue number three and issue number four. And so I, I don't know the, the audience is sort of, saying a little bit i think that there are like we like superhero movies just that some are a and some are b's maybe even some are c pluses right and we do the same in comic book right i don't know i don't think you and i would say that the Eternals are the same as hulk or iron man right we would if we were ranking them right and so the audiences i think are sort of doing what we've been doing arguably for decades just ranking them Right. So I don't know if I was sitting in a Marvel boardroom, I go, you want to make money? Do another Iron Man movie. Right. Yeah. Like, like not with and the Downey doesn't want to do it. That's fine. You can go get somebody else. Batman been succeeding without, you know, Michael Keaton for a long time. So like he's an A guy to the moviegoer. So so play the A guys. I think that they possibly got a bit of a false positive on Guardians of the Galaxy, thinking they could take sort of a little bit of an obscure group of characters and turning them all into A. I think I think Guardians of the Galaxy was a bit of a false positive mm -hmm. where where it didn't work for Shang-Chi or Black Widow or whatever, even to some extent on DC side with uh, Shazam and and Black Adam and stuff, right? They're yeah. they're they're a tier down in our world that you and I live in, 
and now I think the audience is starting to say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna start to rank these characters." No, I, I agree with you, and I th- I think that, I mean there's we we could talk about this all day long and and, yep. and break this down, but I I definitely feel like. You know, they had this situation in the mid two thousands where they didn't have Spider Man, they didn't have X Men, they didn't have their 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 A guys. So they took their B guys and they moved them to A guys. But I think the problem that we've seen is now they're trying to take C C characters and they're skipping a level, right? They're trying to move them up to A guys and 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 they're not putting them in that B category. And I, yeah. I think that's an issue. I think we saw with like Spider Man, like they just introduced Spider Man in Civil War. We'd already had two Spider Man movies, and then they tried to take uh, like characters that are like ten years old in the comic books, which is baby, right? They're like babies in the comic books, and yeah. and, and they're trying to introduce them without like giving them origins. Like we don't know their origins. Like we all know how Spider Man got started. We all know how Batman got started. You don't have to see those origins play out on the big screen exactly. But I think there's a lot of characters that they've tried to introduce and throw in it at the audience that they really don't know who those people are. You well, know? I, 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 there, there's also expectations of everything, everything in business. You got to, you, you have to have realistic expectations. 15 years ago, if I would say to you, Hey, I'm going to do an Ant-Man movie. And it's going to make 400 million. People would be dancing going, Oh my God. Mm-hmm. But now because they've had so much success, they have an Ant-Man movie comes out globally makes 400 million. And they're going, Oh man, Right. right. And you're going, what? what you, like 15 years ago, you would have you would have been ecstatic with those results. Right. right? Uh, so so we like 400 million for Ant-Man. That's to me. I don't know. Like, I, I would take that because I know in my mind where Ant-Man is ranked within all the superheroes at that company. Mm-hmm. Like, cool. Right. If I got 400 million for Suicide Squad, same thing. I'm like, OK, I, they're not they're my, not my A group. Right. Mm-hmm. I know you want them to be, but they're not initially out of the gate brand awareness wise to the world. They're not coming out as A's. And like I said, you've had some nice success with Guardians of the Galaxy and it, to another extent uh, with uh, Doctor Strange. But I think those are more exceptions than the rules. Right. We we all know the 10. They're like I think superheroes are like sports. Mm-hmm. We all know the eight or 10 all-stars and then all the other names are kind of nebulous to us right i mean my wife knows who tom brady is right mm-hmm. like patrick mahomes she knows she knows those names but if i go down the next tier yeah no right and if i go down to like the third tier joe flacco's doing great for cleveland like what what did you just say the, the further you down you go the more niche it becomes and you got to spend more money marketing and doing whatever whatever else so again the easy answer is to me then do what maybe the audience wants, which is more of the A stuff, right? Spider-Man and Superman and Batman and Hulk and Iron Man sell better in comic books than Cloak and Dagger and and Mr. Miracle down here, Mm. right? So yes, and it's playing out, um, to me at least, to some extent, it's playing out almost the same for the last 20, 30 years of our industry in comic book, it's now starting to play out kind of the same-ish, uh, with a couple exceptions, it's the same-ish in Hollywood. So what what does all that mean for Spawn to bring it full circle? I think it, it that it just keeps reiterating to us on our side, the ones that are uh, tied to the Spawn sort of movie right now that we have to try and do something at least slightly different. It can't be the same. It can't be Marvel light, DC light. It can't, right? It just, it it won't work. We have to try for something good, bad, or indifferent. And I'm sure we'll, we'll hear lots of vocal because we will be trying to do something different. Um, But I, I, I think if we're going to try and stand out in, sort of a sea of these types of movies, right? Because now you're talking to people that are in New Zealand and Australia and Spain and Uruguay or whatever. Like they don't they don't know the history of comic books. They're not paying attention to that. So, but to just say, hey, we're going to do a movie that looks like 10 other movies you've seen, I don't think that works. No. So we, we're acutely aware that we're going to have to take a swing at something. And we'll know whether that swing was successful once we get the results of the movie, well, you know, if it 
sort of goes in the direction we're all hoping for. I don't know. We'll we'll see, right? I, I mean, I'll, I'll continue to watch what happens at both sort of Marvel and DC movies, but we we just we can't do one of those kinds of movies. We can't. Well, that's what's so exciting for me personally about a Spawn movie anyways, is just that religious supernatural horror, that sort of, you know, that genre that Spawn fits into that a lot of Marvel and DC characters don't. And the fact that you can get away with doing some things that maybe Marvel and DC can't. And the fact that you can separate yourself from from uh, those companies. And uh, and that's I think that's a great place to end this, Todd. I think that we I think we got it. So uh, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate your time. and, And as always, it's great getting to catch up with you.